Hey folks, welcome back to Heart Gold vs. Crystal. We are here in Blackthorn City, heading off to a remake exclusive special bonus battle. And, uh, it's a thing to be reckoned with. It is not to be taken lightly. Now, uh, don't be fooled by my foolishness in taking the Red Gar Gyarados here. You don't need any special HMs other than uh, Surf to get over to the special battle. But you do, however, need to complete the rival battle over at Mount Moon uh, before you can access it for reasons that you are about to see. Upon his final defeat, the question will start hanging out here in hopes of becoming stronger. And then suddenly, Dragon Trainers. Hello. And yes, we get to have a double battle. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we almost get to team up with Lance again, which would have been the ultimate in cool. Um, but, alas, somehow the question would rather fight alongside us than Claire. He must really hate Claire. Anywho, yes, double battle against the two strongest dragon trainers in the Indigo League. And you can tell that there's a very large discrepancy between them two. Uh, we have Claire, who is uh, in her 50s and very early 60s uh, in terms of level. And, and then Lance, who is in his late 60s, mid 70s. Again, in terms of level, not age. Um, and poor Typhlosion, you just don't stand a chance against that Gyarados. Now the nice thing is, none of these trainers are going to pull out anything that you've never seen before. Um, we've seen Dragonair before, we've seen Gyarados before, we've seen Dragonite before, we've seen Kingdra before, we've seen Charizard before. Um, we've fought all these people before and we've fought all their Pokémon before. However, they are really high level, and thus they are extremely dangerous. Also, screw you and your Shed Skin Dragonair. Now, um, the thing to keep in mind here is that a vast majority, um, and by vast majority I mean four-sixths, I think, two-thirds, uh, of their team do have quadruple weaknesses, so if you can prey on those, awesome, excellent. Use ice moves uh, against the Dragonites, um, and Dragonair technically, although that'll only be two times effective. Use electric moves on the Gyarados, um, use rock moves on the Charizard, and God help you on the Kingdra. Unfortunately, I don't have any electric moves, or ice moves, or dragon moves. I have a rock move, um, but that won't turn out too well, honestly. Um, but yeah. So if you come prepared, if your team is balanced, and you have all these wonderful um, type coverage things handled, great, you'll probably do a lot better than I did in this fight. If your team is really imbalanced and kind of just carried by an Umbreon like mine, then you've got uh, you've got some issues going on here. Because Everett's amazing, but he's going to have some issues here. Um, and just FYI, this is a an abridged fight. Let's say that um, I, I cut out about half of it because, good lord. It, it took a while, there was a lot of, of stalling and spamming, uh, and basically here you'll just see the highlights of, of how each of these Pokémon come out, and how they act, and how they go down. So that Gyarados, um, I got an extremely lucky poison off that Gengar Sludge Bomb, and that took care of Gyarados. Uh, if I hadn't gotten that, it would have stayed around for much longer. Now, the overall strategy I would recommend is to take out Claire's Pokémon, focus on their, uh, her Pokémon completely, uh, and turn it into a two-on-one battle as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, because the question's Pokémon are kind of not great, um, kind of turn the other way around here. It's a two-on-one against me, and that's, that's not optimal, especially, um, since if you happen to take out Lance's Pokemon rather than Claire's, you will be building yourself kind of into Shit Creek, so to speak, because he has the more powerful Pokemon. Um, so I, I would highly recommend focusing on Claire instead. Highly recommend it. Take care of the easy ones while you can. But anyway, uh, his second Pokemon is a Charizard, and as you know, Charizard is quadruple weak to rock. 
Honestly, it's Rock Slide. If it hadn't been a double battle, most likely would have KO'd this thing, because uh, the moves that hit both enemies do have their strength somewhat weakened. Um, so that's unfortunate, and unfortunately Klaus cannot live a thunder, as you see here. So that's wonderful. And it, honestly, I'm, I'm basically not following any of the advice that my current self is, is giving. But seriously, listen to me, and you'll do well. Do as I say, not, not as I do. Now you see this Dragonite loves to abuse Protect. Protect is a thing that it loves, loves, loves to abuse. Um, and you don't know exactly when it's going to abuse it, so you may waste your turn attacking it when you could be attacking the other uh, Pokemon on the field, such as this other Dragonite, level 70 frickin' 5. Jeez. Um, but the, the, the nice thing about this Dragonite, actually, is it has this move Draco Meteor, which may not seem like a nice thing. Um, but the thing about Draco Meteor is that it has a significant drawback. Um, it partially lowers a special attack, and he doesn't have any berries to counteract that. So once he's unleashed it a few times, he will be doing significantly lower damage. But, like his first few times out there, you should be careful. And again, this is why you'd want to be taking it on uh, with, with only the 75 out and not another Dragonite. Anyway, extremely lucky turn there. Um, what you didn't see there was, like, the rest of my team whittling away damage against him and not doing a whole lot of damage, and eventually Everett just coming out and, and finishing the job. Uh, but yeah, I kind of did the opposite strategy from when I was intending there. Um, but I guess once the 75 was out, I really wanted to get rid of it so it would stop doing terrible things to me. Uh, but now it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, and... Now it's time to do whatever it does best, and that is endure hits, um, and eventually take this thing down through a combination of confusion and whittling. Not doing a ton of damage, as you can see. But I'm, I'm sure you're all used to Everett's uh, wonderful and thrilling strategy by this point, so uh, deal with it. And we only have one Pokemon left to go. Uh, and, and I guess moral of the story here, don't don't rely on, on the question to do things for you here. You're, you kind of just got to do things on your own. Uh, but finally we have Kingdra, and Kingdra, you'll recall, is rather annoying because it has, I believe, precisely one weakness, and that is Dragon. And if you're bringing in Dragon, it can probably do Dragon things to you, too, and that would be unfortunate. So, just deal with it the way you dealt with it uh, at the gym, which may have been running around with your head cut off and floundering and screaming a whole lot, um, but if you took care of it then and you get it down to a one-on-one, -on -one, you should be able to take care of it now. And that's the Kingdra. And that, I would argue, is probably the most frustrating fight in the game. Um, you, you can grind for it, obviously. Um, but you're kind of stuck with a useless partner, and it'll probably turn into a two-on-one rather quickly. Bye, guys. And that's just kind of there for the fun of it, basically. And, of course, we have to get a call from Mother. It wouldn't be an episode without it. Ah, uh, but anyway, that takes care of the double battle at the Dragon's Den and check out another special battle after this commercial break. Alrighty, and another special battle. Once again, only accessible after completing the prerequisite, which in this case was the double battle against the Dragon Chamers. This is the final battle against the question. And again, this battle is in crystal, but it's just not different enough for me to show it off. 
on. It's kind of backwards that you had to do the tag battle first, because this is a hell of a lot easier. Uh, it's meant to represent the question at his prime, at his best. But, alas, they kind of screwed that up, because they didn't involve the Sneasel into a Weavile. And you can see by his levels, he's nowhere near as difficult as the tag battle we just went through. So, you're probably going to steamroll this guy, unfortunately. He, he never really uh, ends up being as good as you want him to be. At least me. But anyway, Sneasel goes down to fighting moves as it always has, but now we have Bree to dish out the, the fighting moves, and it's awesome. Next up is Magneton. We've dealt with Magneton so many times before. Once again, not as evolved as it could be. Uh, it could be evolved into a Magnezone, and it would probably go down like a chump anyway, but it just hasn't gotten as far as it could. Could have pumped up the levels a little bit more. I don't know. Bugs me a lot. But yeah, Magneton, ground moves. One hit KO. And then Alakazam. We've seen this Alakazam, of course. And, of course, let's bring in our, our designated dark type. Good ol' Everett. Now, let's see, does this Alakazam have any attack moves that are not psychic type? Uh, I'm going to bet not. So instead, let's just uh, dish out the dark pulses and wait for it to go down. Two hit KO, not too bad. Oh hey, you have Focus Blast. That's actually a good thing to deal with dark types. Um, it's a fighting type move, not super effective against dark. Um, special base, so it's good with Alakazam stats. It can miss, but it never misses as much as it should. Only downside is that ever it's a boss, so... Sorry, Alakazam, you're done. Antiflosion, good old starter Pokemon. You've been dealing with this with, for the whole game. I really should not have to tell you how to take care of it. If, if you haven't learned the, the like basic type triangle of fire, grass, water at this point, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, finally, Klaus is able to show off a little bit. He now has the uh, physical water move Crab Hammer. Uh, which unfortunately was uh, dampened a bit in power, thanks to the burn, which cuts attack. Um, but since, for whatever stupid reason, Kinglers can't learn Waterfall, we've had to wait until now to get a, uh, a stab move that goes on Klaus's optimal offensive capabilities. Um, and, good lord, that's frustrating. This is almost the, the very end of the game. It's the post-game. And it's just... I, I take severe issue with that choice in, in move pool. Uh, but this is the first Pokemon he has that doesn't go down like a chump. Probably because it's one of the he doesn't have a quadruple weakness for once. We're still using Flamethrower on a water type, so... Whatever, man. And there's Crab Hammer. It is a sight to behold. And then Gengar. Again, we've been dealing with this guy for quite a while. Uh, he's a little more of a threat than Alakazam, because, like, he is, is able to do damage to dark types outside of Focus Blast. Uh, but just for fun, let's bring in Webster. Um, because Webster has, of course, Sucker Punch, which is a dark type, and that will be super effective against Gengar, and it'll be oh so satisfying. Unfortunately, this Gengar likes to annoy the shit out of me, so... There we go. That's what I like to see. And Gengar is fragile enough that it does a decent number, not as much as I would like. If I hadn't hurt myself that one time, it would have worked out great, but... We can't always get what we want. 
Webster could have done that, barring unforeseen for circumstances, so whatever. Anyway, bringing in Sandra, not entirely sure of my train of thought here, since uh, Gengar is immune to ground type moves in this generation. I might have been thinking in crystal logic. Oh no, Sandra has Shadow Claw, that's why. Ghost is strong against Ghost for whatever reason, and that takes down Gengar. And then finally, the culmination of, uh, of the question's uh, character arc. I always thought this was so neat. Um, he has a Crobat now, and you, you've got a little uh, sneak preview of it in the, in the tag battle. Crobat, as many Poké fans know, is a Pokémon that you can only obtain through happiness. A, a Golbat that is sufficiently attached to its trainer will evolve into a Crobat. And this is the ultimate proof that uh, the question has, has grown into a not terrible trainer who, like, respects his Pokemon and isn't a total dick to his Pokemon. He's still kind of a dick to every, everybody else, but that, that's beside the point. He's changed is the point, uh, unless this Crobat is going through Stockholm Syndrome, which is entirely possible. But I prefer not to think that way. Um, but Crobat is basically goes down the same way you've been taking out the Zubat and the Golbat. It's just uh, a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, and I think a little bit bulkier. Um, Crobat is is a, a Pokemon that I remember for not going down as easily as I remember it going down. But it went down, so whatevs. And that is the final battle against the question. Wasn't entirely anticlimactic, but he still could have done a little bit better. I guess that's just a message that we all have a little more growing to do. Or it was bad game design. Uh, but that takes care of our dealings with the question, and we will take on the Elite Four Round 2 next time.